1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and then we'll go to verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and uh, we'll go to verse 13. <clears throat> In our day and age, we live in a day and age where there is a lot of apostasy and hard times. And I know that this church has been through a lot. And uh, the, one of the biggest things that really hurts your pastor is when his own member is going through hurt. And uh, a lot of times I, uh, sometimes I would say this, but, and maybe sometimes I say this loosely, but sometimes I uh, I'd be willing to give up one of my arms and one of my legs just so that the Lord can take care of you and everything would be all right. So I do have a burden for people. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a pastor to begin with. So, but the Lord has uh, taught me and he has taught you and he has taught this church that in order to overcome the obstacles and trials in life, it's not when he takes away those things. And a lot of times we would wish and we would want those things to be taken away. Especially at a time when evil is rising more and more, what you need to do, and this is perhaps the first thing that you'll probably ever do in your life, <clears throat> because we live in a day and age where people don't do this, is to do verse 13. The Bible says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. The Apostle Paul, as he is, close, uh, as he is continuing on his ministry for the Lord, he realizes that in order for him to endure and to carry on, because he went through a lot of beatings, a lot of persecutions, I don't know anyone else in the Bible who went through as many beatings as the Apostle Paul or the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul went through so much tremendous hardship, yet he overcame. Yet he was able to do great, accomplish great feats for the Lord. The reason why is because he stood strong. And what you need today is to have some courage in you. You need to have some guts. You need to have something in you that will push. We live in a time, this is so dangerous now. We live in a time of complete dependency. As the government gets more control, as technology has more of a stronghold, we have become more complacent and more uh, we have become more effeminate and we have become more weak and we have lost, we have lost our strength. We became completely dependent, so dependent that people are willing to pay big money for psychologists, for drugs. We live in that day and age. It's so sad that people are willing to sacrifice money, time, and even their own joys in life just so that something else can be strong for them and take the burden for them, if that makes any sense to you. It's about time that our generation and the next generation takes matter in their own hands and, be, and own the problem, rather letting the problem own us, rather than letting someone else take care of the problem. We need to own it ourselves. But you need that push. It's the reason why is you've given up on that. And I hope that today's preaching will help you and open your eyes on that fact. Let's start off with the word of prayer. Father God, I need you now more than ever. Uh, I cannot preach. I cannot say the right words. All I am is sinful dust and ashes and a man. And I don't know if anyone else would be blessed by this message. But only you can give them the blessing. Will you reach out and speak to them? Because my arm's too short. I can't reach out to them. But your arm is everlasting. And as that song goes, leaning on the everlasting arms. And that's what I'm going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you to go to Joshua 1. Joshua 1. It's a famous passage and I preached this sermon before. 
Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. The first thing that you must do in order to be strong, in order to push, is to have that determination in your mind already that I'm going to be strong. It's to have that commitment and that preparation in your mind that, hey, that trial's going to come, get ready, and you're going to have to push. Hey, you know that's going to come at you and it's going to hurt you, but get ready, face it. You need to be strong. And it's very hard nowadays to be strong because we live in a day and age where the devil has robbed our strength. And we become weak and now we became dependent on the devil's system to take care of us. We become dependent on him rather than the strength that God has provided for you. In Joshua 1.9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Uh, you, if you had that in your mind, if you said that in your mind, you'd, you'd face the trial head on. Who are the people who fear the trial? Who are the people who cannot endure the trial? Who are the people who feel like they're at the breaking point and they cop out? It's those who have not done this to begin with. You know what you should have done to begin with? When that You should have anticipated, expected that trial to come. And then you should have told yourself, be strong. It will hurt. It will come. It will be hard. So get ready and be strong. I'm determined to push through. I'm determined to not let it get to me. And no matter how much my flesh cries out, I'm going to cry out to God. And I'm going to just keep moving on and keep reading his word and keep praying and keep going to church. And I'm going to keep remembering his promises. Get ready. Be strong. Do you do that? No, you don't even anticipate the trial that's going to come out. You just live in your own world of normalcy, so to speak, comfort and a machine and a matrix, and thinking that you're going to wake up in the morning, you're going to drive, and you're going to uh, make money, and you're going to take care of your home or your own life, and if you are married and you have kids, then your own family, and you think all this kind of stuff but you don't think about, hey, the devil might just cause something wrong with your car when you're driving along. Hey, there might get a phone call and there might be a crisis that comes up of something bad happening to you. Hey, you might just wake up one morning and then you'll feel that pain and you go, where did that come from? Hey, when I go to church then, there might be a problem that might arise. You don't think like that. You think it's all going to be normal, it's all going to be to your preference and what you're used to. And that's why you're not strong. You know what? You need to be strong. You need to be strong and say, anticipate, be ready and say, when it comes, I'm going to charge right through. Yeah. Yeah. When that bad thing happens in church, I'm just going to charge right through and shout it out during singing and then put a smile on my face and love that brother and sister in Christ to death and just yeah. think about the promises of God and then get right with God on the yeah. altar and get a blessing yeah. out of this church. I'm going to charge through that pain, that depression, that dispute, that misery or that problem that's going to happen in church. I'm just going to charge through that and then enjoy a good Sunday and get back to my car and go back home and say that was a good church service that day. Some of you need to have that mindset that I'm going to go back home and face that trial and that hardship and that problem arises and I'm going to charge right through and I'm going to be strong and I'm going to remember the promises of God. I'm going to love my family. I'm going to thank the Lord. I'm going to keep the house in structure and I'm going to enjoy the blessings God has given to me and I'm going to say thank you, Lord, for the food, for the home, for the clothes, for what you've given to me and I'm just going to charge right through and just put a smile on my face and not lose the joy of the Lord. But but the problem is, is that when that one little problem comes right in, you just let it ruin your whole entire day, if not the next day, 
and then the next day, and then the next day, and you finally get over it a couple of weeks. And then when you get over it a couple of weeks, and the next problem comes, and you go, oh, no, not another one. And then you let it get to you a couple of weeks. And then you, you get rid of that one. And then the next problem comes, and you go, oh, another one. And then you, you think that your whole life is miserable, and that your whole life is, oh, hardship, woe is me, woe is me. No, it's because you don't have that mindset up. As I, that I am living, I am living in a world of problems. And as I live in this world of problems, I'm going to charge right through and make sure that I enjoy the blessings of God. Amen. That's what you need to do. I mean, the world's problem's not solved yet. With all the ridiculous thing that's going on throughout the pandemic and then the war going on and then prices surging high and stuff like that. See, problem's not done yet with this world. But in the midst of that, people are still trying to find some moments of happiness, trying to live with it. Why can't Christians do better? Why can't Christians do better? So we are in a world of problems. So don't think that it's going to be gone. Realize it's a part of your life, so be strong, charge it head on, and say, hey, depression, hey, fear, hey, worry, I'm not going to let you take my joy, I'm just going to charge right through, and be strong, charge it right through, be strong, oh, I can't do that, and see, you didn't mentally prepare yourself, you didn't have that mindset to push through, that's why you can't do that. If you have that in your mind to begin with, you can overcome. And God can give you strength. But you need that strength and determination to begin with. Have that to begin with so that you can charge right on through and get the victory. But if you don't have that in your mind to begin with, you will be sad, miserable, depressed. Yeah. You will remain that way. I want you to go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I want you to go to Romans chapter 4. And we'll look at verse 20. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. We live in a day and age like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, it's so hard. And, you know, just watching TV and then doing this all day and then doing this all day and doing this all day. Oh, And because of that, you live in that kind of plane and you're lost in that kind of realm. That's why you never... Woke up your senses and say, get a grip on yourself and uh, and charge. Okay, get ready. When you go to work, these problems are going to come up. Let's do it. When you go through that exam and that part in class, get ready. Let's do this. You need to have that get a grip on yourself and go through the charge right through. But if you don't have that mindset, you will always feel the defeat and the hurt and feel like you get hit all the time. But a person who's mentally prepared and says, just be strong, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, then when it comes, you just go, and then you charge right through. But then a guy who doesn't go, and charge right through, when that thing comes and you get carried along with that and then strikes you through. Romans chapter 4. And notice what the Word of God says about Abraham. You know how you become strong on earth? way you can become strong is at verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You know how you also become strong is because, simple, you don't have faith. You don't believe in God. In order for you to overcome this world and Going through the trials in this ministry and in my life, I've learned that there's absolutely no other thing that I can rely upon except God. We all say that, and it's like a cliche thing, like, yeah, with God I'll overcome, and with God I'll find the strength, but you don't really understand that, child. You don't really understand when you say that, do you really mean God alone? Do you really mean that there is no other choice out there except God alone? You know, the problem with you nowadays 
is that when attack and trials come, the immediate tendency of the flesh is to find a solution itself. The immediate tendency of the flesh is to grab that thing that's hiding in your cabinet, some kind of drug, something, some liquor of courage, so to speak. The thing that's the tendency of the flesh is to let the mind run in worries and then say, well, this problem's going to come out and this one and this one and this one and then find things in your life that proves your worry and you're going to go, see, it did happen. I knew it happened. And then you're going to try to find the next worry to confirm. And then that fear rises more and more and more. You see what your flesh is relying on is to try to find solutions itself it's relying on things to see and where the heart feels the comfort. The problem with flesh is relying on see flesh, basically. All those things are flesh. And you feel like that's where you find the comfort. That's where you find the strength. That's how you can overcome. That's why you need a psychologist. That's why you need drugs. That's why you need more money. And if only I had better income and more free time in my schedule, more freedom in my life than I could do this and that. No, that's the problem, see? And that's why you can't overcome problems in your life. You know why? You become dependent upon those things and scenarios and circumstances to help you overcome the problems. But guess what? Even if those circumstances work out for you, a new problem will come out. Yeah. Then what? Yeah. Then what? One thing... I've learned is circumstances will always come yeah. and you can't rely on circumstances. You have to truly only rely on God. I have yeah. nothing out there. I know the tendency of the flesh is if only I had more free time out of my work schedule, then I can do this much more for the Lord, do this much more for the family. And hey, you have nothing but God. Let God work it out. Do you pray to the Lord? Do you say, God, you have to work out the free time of my schedule? Lord, you have to give me wisdom on what I can do. Do you do that uh, with your money situation? The tendency of the flesh is to count every cent and then to make sure that you have like six different open bank accounts and to make sure that you tithe just a little bit and then make sure that you please your boss and your coworkers so you can get that higher pay and that way you can squeeze through the day. You know, see, uh, you're, you're seeing all flesh. And that's where you find your strength and not in God. Because why? God's going to take those things away that you rely on to finally open your eyes and make you see, you see, you are hopeless. There's nothing for you to turn to. And what are you going to do after that? Maybe you might just do this after that. And maybe, just maybe, you'll finally give up everything and say, I just give up, God. I only have you. I don't know what to do. And God's like, finally, you understood. Amen. Our problem is God plus more security. God plus I have my plans. God plus my schedule. God plus works out in this circumstance for me. God plus more time. God plus, hey, hey, hey. God don't like that with your salvation, eh? God plus works. God alone. He saved your soul from hell. Oh my goodness, with saved Christians nowadays, they don't rely on their works for their salvation, but on Jesus Christ. And if you can do that for your eternity, it's amazing you can't do that with your lifetime. You just so much rely on your works. The works of this world, the works of science, and the works of your current situation, and the works of your logic, the works of your reason, and works, 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 work. what works for you? Hey, nothing works except the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it always boggles and contradicts your way of working things. God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah. Amen. Are you strong in the faith? That's what faith is, truly on God alone. And when it's on God alone, man, are you reading his word? Are you praying? Are you going to church? Are you like hearing the preaching and trying to get fed by the Lord? If you are doing that, that means you're so desperate maybe. Maybe you're doing that because you're so desperate and there's nothing else out there to go to or turn to. And you're so desperate and like, this is all I got. Even if I don't want to, even if I have a hard time believing it, this is all I've got. I got no choice but to keep doing this. Amen. 
maybe the Lord finally put you at that point. You know, when the troubles get higher, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, I wonder if I'm causing that because I'm putting my own works there and I, ne I did not give it up and surrender to the Lord. Until you surrender only to God and have enough trust to just let Him alone take care of the problem, you can become strong. See, we rely so much on better education, better money, everything of ourselves, and we put our strength in that rather than on Jesus Christ. How you can become strong is literally like if Romans 8.28 is the only verse that you know of for I don't know what kind of problem you're going through, but if Romans 8.28 is the only verse, and sometimes it feels like that. I don't know about you, but there were some moments that only that verse was the only thing that pulled me through. I don't know about you. You're probably more spiritual than me. Because, I mean, I was like, I mean, I know tons of Bible verses, right? You know, draw the charts and everything. But man, I don't know about you. I'm just stupid enough that only Romans 8.28 was the only verse I can think of that time. And I was like, God, give me another verse. And God's like, no, that's all the verse you need. And you need to put your faith on that and realize that alone. And I'm alone. And uh, me alone enough is enough for you it's sufficient for you Amen. and you Amen. so why don't you rely and believe in it and all i am is clinging on to romans 8 28 and it feels like i'm holding on to plastic and something so fragile as i'm going through a storm but guess what i got through Amen. Amen. Yeah. so you need to believe and that's the problem is that you don't believe you don't believe in his promise in his word you need to do that that's why you're not strong it's because you're still relying on something and i want to warn you please okay that's the sign of weakness the sign of weakness is you turn to this one you turn to this one you turn to this one and then another dose and then another dose and then another dose you know and, the, and you turn to all these things to keep you going, that's a sign of weakness. Yes, yes. And you'll never become strong, never. You'll become that complacent, dependent person. And I'm all for those. You know how you become strong? There's nothing out there except you, God. And when God is in your life, you become your own person, your own man, yeah. your own woman. And then you strengthen and you're able to handle and solve problems yourself because God pulled you through so much mess and trials that now you're more familiar and you're able, better apt to handle. That's strong. You need to become strong. Genesis, uh, Philippians 4.13. Now this might be hard to believe, but I want you to go to Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13. As Bible believers, we put no confidence in the flesh or in self. And that's the messed up mentality of the churches nowadays. The apostasy in our world today is where Joel Osteen and these positive thinking preachers are trying to say, believe in yourself and trust in your ability and all that kind of positivity garbage. They do that nowadays because that elevates humanism rather than God's power. And that's why Oprah Winfrey had Joel Osteen over. Why? It promotes her way of doing things, that humanistic element. We can overcome. We can overpower. And that's how they're surviving throughout the past two years is they're just only trusting in their own ability. Yeah, wow. They have so much belief in themselves to overcome. Uh, but you know, but you and I know, all, know this, that at the end it'll just turn to dust. Right. There's always a new problem that happens. Oh, we took care of the virus, and then, oh, what happened to gas prices? Watch, after gas prices get solved. Let's see what's next, man. You know, see, there's always a new problem when you rely on your human ability. But here's something that I want to tell you. If lost sinners can rely on themselves that it's tough, but we can do it. I got a question for you. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, uh, you know that Christ is in you, right? Yeah. So because Christ is in you, you should have the strength 
to overcome the problems yourself. Don't you know that? Yeah. That's the problem nowadays. We can't co conquer the problems ourselves because we feel like, oh, it's too hard. And the tendency of a Christian is, this temptation's too strong, Lord. This trial is just too tough, Lord. And I can't do it, Lord. And I can't do it. Hey, man, why is a lost person doing that better than you? Without Jesus Christ and you got Jesus Christ. Are you saying Jesus Christ is weaker than that lost person? So, actually, I don't mean it like Joel Osteen when I say believe in yourself, but when I say believe in yourself, what I mean is because Christ is in you. Because look at Philippians 4, theme, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things, not period. I can do all things, why? Through Christ, which what? Strengtheneth me. That's why you're strong. Amen. You're strong because you can do it. And that's your problem. When the trial hit and the pain hits and you feel it, the first thing in your mind is, I can't do it. That's what happens. You say, I can't do it, Lord. Oh, I just can't do it. I can do it. No, you can. Yep. And you just don't have faith on 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He won't give you a temptation or trial greater than you can bear. You can do it. Yes, you can. Oh, I, you know, here's a, another problem with Christians. I believe in God, but I can't believe in myself. How many have thought of that? I thought that thousands of times. Oh, yeah, you're right. God has the promise. God has the power. But I just don't believe in myself, and I can't do it. You know, that's the problem is that isn't Christ in you? Didn't he promise that he'll give you the strength where you can overcome the problems yourself through his power, through his grace? <laughs> All right, then don't doubt in yourself. If you doubt yourself without God, sure, you should put all the doubt in that and you should be scared to death. But if Christ is in you and you're following his will, then don't doubt yourself. Amen. Believe in yourself that you can do it. You have the strength. Everyone's mind is, I can't do this, I can't do this. Hey, you don't trust the strength God has given to you. You, you think God is dumb and says, uh, this trial oh, is too difficult for him, but I'll just give it to him. <laughs> no, God won't give you a temptation greater than you can bear. And he says, this is just right for so-and-so right there, perfect to a T. And that person can overcome it perfectly, right to a T. It's just right. And that person can do it. Then why don't you use it? Because you don't believe in yourself. Believe in what you can do, not because it's you, but because God has promised to give you strength. Amen. God has promised to give you grace. Amen. And when that mind comes up that, oh yeah, I believe in God, but I just don't believe in myself, that's a problem then. Because God is in you giving you that strength. When you say, I don't believe in myself, you're not trying to pretend to be a holy Christian saying, Oh, I have no confidence in my flesh, you know, like the Apostle Paul. No, that's not what you're doing now. Yeah, what you're doing is you're doubting God's promise that I gave you the grace where you can overcome the trial yourself. Come on, bro. That's your problem. Don't pretend you're humble and don't pretend you're claiming Romans 7. You're not. You just doubt God's power in you, what he's given to you. And he believes that you can do it. He believes that you can overcome it. It's time that you need to believe it yourself. You need to believe that I can do it. Yeah. I can overcome because he gave me a promise yeah. that's not greater than I can bear. Yeah. Now yeah. go back to work, go back to your school, go back to your family, go back to that squabble, yeah. go back to the issues and the trial and the fire and say, I can do it. Oh, it hurts so much. You're going to break apart. You can't do it. No, I won't break apart. I'll just go through that spear. Yeah. Go through me. Yeah. I can do it. You can do it. That's why you're not strong enough. That's why you don't have courage. You don't believe that you can do it. You need to believe that you can do it. Why? Not because of you, but because of Jesus Christ. Remember that. 
because of Jesus Christ, because yes. of Jesus Christ, because of Jesus yes. Christ, he gave, he gave you a promise that his grace is sufficient. That means that's all you need. That means that's all you need. You don't need extra or plus. That's all you need. His grace for you to bear it. Now go through it. Grit your teeth. And then just go through it. And fight! Fight! Fight the Lord! Because if you don't, the lost people are. If you don't, the lost people are. Go to Genesis 49, 23. Genesis chapter 49 through 23. Genesis chapter 49, verse 23. You ever had it where your mind is just totally a daze and confused and it can't think anymore and it can't think of problems, I mean, you can't think of solutions to problems anymore? You ever been to a point in your life where your body is just so worn out, it just feels miserable? I mean, one word that just comes out of your mind as you feel that pain in your body is just miserable. Miserable. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been through that point in your life. And then when you have that, it's easier said than done. How can you be strong, right? Easier said than done. I preached a thousand times. I preached so many things. But, you know, it doesn't... When you feel that, it's totally different, isn't it? Genesis 49, 23. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But, his bow, abode in strength. And the arms of his hands, what? Were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. How can I be strong when I, every sensation in my body and my thought and everything is just... Uh, that's how you feel like, you know, when you come to church, you know, after every, all the bad things that happen, you go... Uh, wake up in the morning to get to work and to start your day, it's... Uh, that's the only thing that I can feel and think of. And how can you be strong after that? My friend, that feeling, that sensation, that pain is necessary. It makes you strong. It makes you strong. You might say, how so? I don't understand how it can make me strong. It's because it's same thing with your physical biology. Muscles don't become strong without pain. It has to go through that. Ah, ah. What are you doing? You're, de you're, become, you're developing stronger yeah. muscles. There you, go. Yes, you know what you're doing when you uh, wake up in the morning and there's a trial? You're going... Ah, ah, ah. You know, when you drag to church, you know, some of you wake up earlier in the morning, drive a long ways, and you got a busy schedule, you don't have time, but you just drag yourself to church anyway, you're... Health or your body just feels miserable, but you drag yourself anyway. You know what you're doing? You're doing. Yeah. Oh, 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 I hate this. Oh, it's so hard. And but at that same time, you're developing the muscle. And you become strong. And that's so important to understand is that I know it hurts. And all you can think about is misery, misery, misery. Yeah. But muscles don't come out unless they're in pain. And when they come out in pain, then that's why you become stronger. You don't, uh, the thing is this, is that a lot of times, the reason why, when pain comes out in life, the tendency of the Christian is, God, give me strength. But when you say that, you think it's something that's just given to you. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. It's like, oh, Lord, it's so hard. Just give me strength. And then you think that something is just going to happen to you where you feel some kind of strength and some kind of moment where, yeah, I can do it and move on. No, that's not. When, when you do that, a lot of times you feel like it falls on deaf, deaf ears and God's not listening to you. That's not how God gives you strength. 
you're like, uh, God, give me strength. And you think that it's a cheating thing, steroids. Like somehow you just get strength and then boom, oh, I can do it. No. When you're going, oh, God, give me strength. Lord, why aren't you giving me strength? God, where are you? And God's just going, child, already, you're be I am help. You are becoming strong. I'm, I'm in the middle of that process making you strong. I am giving you strength. While you're groaning, remember this. At the very same time, the Holy Spirit is doing a great miracle right now in you. So no one wants to, no one wants to take courage and become strong and then be able to fight through life. Why? Because no one likes that feeling. No one likes yeah. that feeling. But if you were to, if you were to endure through that, if you were to just accept that and realize this is reality, this is how I become strong, and just go, Ugh, don't lose that miracle that God is currently, right now, operating in you. Don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. God is doing a great work right now in you. He's trying to turn you into something. Look at Revelation 3, please. Revelation chapter 3. The problem why Christians nowadays are not willing to become strong or to have that to just have some guts and to just push or come on, let's do this and fight and charge is because there is one key thing and that this is a devil's tool and he won, all right? It wasn't through persecution. How he got this world was through comfortableness, through comforts, making things comfortable. That's how he won. That's why Christians did not become stronger. You might say, why? Because, here's the key, the reason why you can't become stronger is because you first are not willing to leave your comfort zone. We all have our comfort zone, our own way of how we serve God, how our spiritual life is like. Am I getting something here? Because you think that you read your Bible daily, prayed daily, went to church, and that, you know, won a couple souls salvation and passed out tracts and, you know, stayed away from sin... That you're right with God. No, that's not the thing that you're right with God all the time like that. Because that might be your comfort zone. And God's like, no, you're still too comfortable, child. It's like Gideon. He has a small army. All right, Lord, this is good enough for you. And God's like, no, you're too comfortable. We, we need to drop that. Huh? 300. Lord, I'm going to die. God's like, no, no, no. See, you're in your comfort zone. And you know what God's doing? He's taking you out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And you thought that because you read your Bible, prayed and served God and stayed away from sin and stuff like that, that you should be strong enough. No, there's something of your flesh that God knows that you don't know. There's something that God knows about your flesh that you don't know. Ah, no, no, child. There's something, there's a weak spot right here that you're yeah. too comfortable oh, in that you don't know about. I need, you, I need to take you out of there. You yeah. cannot become strong until I get you out of there. Right. You know what, who stronger people are? Stronger people are those who are willing to get outside of their comfort zone and face the great yeah. unknown. Yeah. And the darkest fear that they never thought of that just came out. Where's your comfort zone now? Like, oh my people, my security, and Lord, you literally took, away me, uh, took me away from all that. That's right. You were so comfortable there and dependent on those things. That made you weak. It's about time you got out. You're a big boy now. You're a big girl now. Let's go. Come out of your comfort zone. That's the thing. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, and verse 16, So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. 
because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's our church today. That's why churches fall apart. That's why they're weak. They don't have strength. Why? It's because they are not willing to leave their comfort zone. When God takes away that comfort zone, you think that it's the end of the world and you're going to die. And God just exposed, see, that's what your flesh was so dependent on all this time. You know how you become strong too? Here's another thing, which is a sad thing people don't do. Look at this. In verse 19, as many as I love, I what? Rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. You know why this church is so weak? Because they're so comfortable to the point that they cannot take rebuke. You know what's so sad nowadays? People can't take rebuke. It hurts their feelings. It's too offensive. And when you have that, that's why you're afraid to do new things. That's why you're afraid to go to the great unknown. You know why? You don't want to take a rebuke. Because sometimes you make mistakes and I make mistakes. And then you're afraid of making a mistake where, oh my, you know, uh, I made a mistake. And people tell you, you're wrong and you made a mistake. And then you go, oh, it's not like I meant to. The job is new to me or the life is new to me. And that's why people don't do that. That's why some people are afraid to accept a higher position in a job place. Or a different task that they're supposed to do in life. Or go pursue higher ed. Some people are even afraid of marriage and a family. You know Why? They're afraid of that responsibility. Yeah. And they're like, I'm going to make mistakes, and that's too much for me. And those are people who can't take in rebuke, see? Yeah. When, uh, one thing I learned as a leader, which is very important, for a person to take a leadership position, they have to own accountability. They have to take in the pain of their mistakes. And if the people blame them and blame the leaders and something like that, they have to learn to own it. Yeah. You, know why, you know why I'm still going on online? I had to own every criticism that I get online. And online is brutal, guys. They'll say anything because the, it's so easy to go behind a screen and type yeah. something. You know what I had to do? I had to think, I don't care what people say. And I have to think about, look, I'm going to own it. And you have to own that. You know why people are afraid to improve their preaching and their teaching and when they go up on the pulpit to be discipled by the pastor? They're afraid to take rebuke. Mm, there's a mistake right here and you can do better right here. They're afraid of that. People are afraid of higher ed and that's why teachers say, we can't do red pen anymore. We'll just put a sticker that, just try harder. You know why? They're afraid of that red mark and the shame and the embarrassment that every Asian feels that I just shamed my whole family it's all red right here <laughs> yeah. you know why you're afraid to take in rebuke wow. we live in that generation wow. guys yeah. we live in that generation you know let me say this too okay some Bible believers can take hard preaching why because it's hard preaching that's aimed at a general audience but man, when they, are, when, when they are taken aside and they're pointed out of their sin or their problem, you know what that happens to that Bible believer? Who do you think you are? Oh, you should show more love. And oh, who, who, what are you talking about? And, oh, and then make up excuses like, well, the reason why I did this in... That's why you're weak. You can't take rebuke. You know, I get fear all the time because I have an online publicity and accountability and not only that I, I am a, a young age now because of that I should just quit the ministry shouldn't I especially with every older pastor out there who looks at me and I can be accountable for especially if they're like you know if there's something that they can point out my mistake and my error don't you think that puts a lot of fear in me 
Sure it does. Sure it does. Everyone, pretty, pretty much the world knows who I am now. So because they know that, it's easier to find faults with me. And that puts a lot of pressure on me. And because that puts a lot of pressure on me, and especially of my age, that don't work better because I'm young. And then they'll, it's easier for them to find more faults and errors with me now. Oh, the guy's too arrogant, too prideful, you know, too strong right there, and just young, doesn't know what he's doing. Now, because of all that, should I just quit and run? No, you know what I did? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'm going to take it and just keep going on. Amen. I had to do that. Were there sometimes I'm wrong? Sure. Did I repent of them? Sure. Did I own up to them? Sure. And I move on. But people don't do that. They make a big deal of that and they run away. That's why you can't become strong. If you're wrong, just be wrong. You know what that verse says? Be zealous therefore and repent. You know what that means? Be zealous to, I'm wrong. Be zealous to, okay, I'll fix that. Be zealous to, okay, put as much red markers on, on this paper as you want. Yes, I am stupid. Yes, I am a sinner. Yes, I need to get right with God. Because why? I am nothing without Jesus Christ. Now, what happened to your humility after that? You're, you're too full of yourself. Got so much pride, ego, reputation to protect. That's your problem. 2 Samuel 22. 2 Samuel 22. And then I want you to go to Isaiah 40. I want you to go to 2 Samuel 22. And then I want you to go to Isaiah 40. Now this one is going to be surprising to you. These two things I'm going to mesh. These are separate points, but I'm going to kind of mesh them together. A lot of times, this is very important to understand, when we try to push ourselves to become strong in the Lord, we lose our gentleness. Sometimes, you got to understand this, if you lose your gentleness, that's not a sign of strength. That's a sign of weakness. You might say, why is that? Because to be gentle takes strength. It takes energy. It takes holding your flesh back and anger. Because who wants to do all that extra work? To become strong, it takes gentleness too. You might say, why? Uh, 2 Samuel 22. When you look at this passage, it's uh, King David. He went through a lot for the Lord. And he said this in verse 33. God is my what? Strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. But look at this, how God became his strength. Verse 36. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy what? Gentleness hath made me great. I understand that. You might say, how do I, uh, why would you understand that? Because there are times where I would push myself so hard to be strong that what happens is then I lash out at others. And then I would put them to my level of where I'm pushing at. And hey, I'm a pastor. I know what I'm talking about. All right. I'm married. I know what I'm talking about. Hey, I know what I'm talking about right here is that, see, what happens is when you become strong for the Lord and you push, you push, you push, you become so weak that you just lash it out on the other person and expect them to jump a hundred leap lap to where you're at when it took you time to get there. Did that make any sense or was that too deep for you? Should I get out that whiteboard and then start drawing it out for you to make it simpler? You know what? You know what takes strength is. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Let me help you out here. It, you know what's easier? The sign of weakness. Oh! 
Come on, sheep. Ah! No, 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 no. Year number one, two, three, and oh, come on, I dropped again, and oh, come on, four, five, oh, I dropped to two people, and six, seven, eight, and oh, it's coming along faster, nine, ten, and eleven. You know how you become strong? Gentleness. Yeah. It takes strength to do that. But it is a sign of weakness to not be gentle. Because why? It's so simple. You have to think about how the Lord was gentle with you. Wow. You know why? God didn't like, oh God, this trial's too tough. Aren't you thankful God didn't go, ah! <laughs> Aren't you thankful that God just let you go, and God's like, all right, I'll show you something here. And he just lets you keep whining, sometimes get bitter and complain at God, and God's like, child, you're flesh. Come on. And some of you stinking, backslidden, fleshly Christians, you know, you just go prodigal and you go right over here, and God was waiting for you for years and going, come on, come on, let me put a tr problem here, uh, an answer here, a trial here to show you something. One by one, there you go, now you're seeing something. Uh-huh, come on, I'm gentle with you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? What, took you years to finally get saved? Took you years to finally get right with God? Took you years to get right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. God was gentle with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thy gentleness hath made me great. Yeah. It takes strength. So where's that gentleness you have? It's that, it's, uh, so how can I be gentle though? It's so hard. How, how does that make a person stronger? It's simple because if the person really knows that baby very well, a baby is fragile, and you don't just force that thing to, come on, wah, run, like that. You don't do that. You always, the baby goes like this, and sometimes you have to pamper it. Sometimes you have to take care of it. You have to be fragile, but then you don't slack off either. You make sure that, come on, it's walking time. You try to find some things. That, if you're so familiar with the baby's personality, you'll know motivating factors. You'll know factors where the baby will start to do something things that will strengthen the baby, things that are the weak spots of the baby, you'll know so much that you're going to do it right. But that's why, that's why you're not strong. And that's why the person's not becoming stronger. You might say, why is that? You don't know that baby well enough. You need to know that baby well. You know what God taught me as a pastor? I need to know baby Christians well. I need to know, uh, why do you think that I became more popular for this? You know what was my style? Just telling you guys, all right? And if you guys didn't really understand, then I would just say, just rewind the video, okay? And then just look at the Bible and spare, do your spare time. No, I had to, okay. And then look what God did with me now. That's why I did this. I didn't do this for fun, all right? I did that for... And that's what a lot of people come for, is that. Yeah. Which I don't like, actually. <laughs> but that's what people came for. And that's how a lot of people got, people who were stuck in the baby stage Christianity, suddenly they just leaped and they go, oh, I want to know more doctrine, more doctrine, and study more, study more. That's why it was able to open up some eyes of lost people because we're in a baby age where 90% of Christianity, if not 99%, is carnal babes. Yeah. And because of that, it had to take a mindset and strength. Yeah. To produce strength is to understand the babe's mindset. Yeah, that's good, right? It takes strength. And that is, but it's so hard and there's so much time passing by and they got to hurry up. See, that's why you're not strong because you have no patience. 
Isaiah 40, verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You know how you get your strength renewed is you wait. You know why you're so weak and, you know, you go like, Argh! you know why? There's a thing in the flesh called instant gratification. I want the answer now. I want it solved now. I want to get the problem over with. Come on, let's do it. That's why you do this. That's why you can't be gentle. You know why? You're not strong enough to go. <sighs> Come on. All right, don't put all your strength and power at once. Just save it, reserve it, and then push it on. And Come on. It's going to be a long road. Come on. Robert Garcia is a lot of work, and he said a lot of dumb stuff, but come on, yeah. No, he's going to, he can, he can preach real good, yeah. Oh, he's talking well with the brethren now, and man, he can preach well. Come on, come on. Church member here and like that. Sean. Oh my goodness, he watched too much stuff online, man. I don't know how I can, oh man, that's a lot of work. Come on. Oh man, good word study. Patience, come on, Gene. Jared's a what? You play poker? I should quit now, right? So that otherwise I can't come to church again. Come on, uh, two months, let's see what happened. <sighs> oh, it's faster than I thought. It's been three weeks and, oh, he passed out a thousand tracks and, what, what, he's married? Oh my! <laughs> Evangelist so-and-so, preacher so-and-so, blowout so-and-so. What a great church, they say. Why? Day one, day two, it's hard, but pray for me. Come on, let's go to church. Let's sing it out. I prayed for two years. Come on. You're here. Patience. You know, I have a whole bunch of problems that have not been crossed out on my list. Prayer requests of problems that have not been crossed out on my list, and it's building up more. You know why? Because it's patience. It's, I don't get all, it, all of it over with at once. It's at God's timing. And when God answers, sometimes you'd be surprised. Sometimes you'll leap, time leap and jump up to here all of a sudden. In my mind, I'm like, God, just do things one by one, all right? But God will just give you one and then five new ones. And then two of them get solved, and then all of a sudden four more come out, and you're carrying nine, and all of a sudden it's all taken care of, and then for about a couple months there's nothing going on. Now all of a sudden there's like three new problems. God works like that. He doesn't go by your timetable, your convenience, your preference of solving problems. He goes by, are you patient? Let's do this. And you're not going to get that problem over with like that. Yeah. It takes time. That's how you become strong. You know why you're not strong? You're not patient. You want it over with. Right. You know what the easiest way to be strong is? There is the easiest way out of everything to become strong, to just go through problems in life. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 mentions for strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I, you know how it makes it the easiest way for you to handle problems and to become strong is to happily embrace it. That's why it's hard for you to be strong. You hate it. Now, I'm not saying to just 
in, I, I think you're a weirdo if you're happy, if you enjoy every single problem that happens in life, you know. I'm not saying that, but the mindset is I count it all but joy because the Bible says an opportunity to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. If you're like, this is only once in a lifetime I'll ever live for him and burn for him. I'm going to burn out for him because I'll never, ever do it again. God, what an opportunity. Do you have a mindset of, I want to fight? I want to push? Amen. It's good to have. If you don't have that, that's why you can't push. You always run away. That, then you become weak. You know what it is when the problem comes? All right, I'm going to come out for you and get on to you. The tendency of Christians is go, oh, no, not again. Ah! You know what it should be? When that enemy rears its ugly head and said, it's time, then you got to go, that's right, I've been waiting for you. Yeah! Amen. You don't have that mindset that, oh, yeah, I've been waiting. I've been praying. I'm, I want to get in the battle for the Lord and give him a victory. I want to give a head for Jesus Christ. Come on! You don't have that mindset. A mindset to win is a mindset that I want to win. I want to fight. That's the easiest way to be strong. The hardest way to be strong is that opposite feeling. I hate this. I don't want this. And oh, it's so hard. Then of course it'll be hard. But a heart that, Lord, you died on the tree for me. At least I can carry a mark or a stripe for you. Yeah. Wow, what an opportunity, Lord. Let it come. And I'll go through it for you by your grace. Embrace. Embrace the attack. And that's the easiest way to overcome a trial is to embrace the attack and be ready for the attack and say, that's right, I wanted to go through you. Give me a stripe for the Jesus Christ. Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. It's a lot of hardship nowadays and trials and it's very difficult to serve God. Because we live in a land and an era and an age of comfort, being comfortable, being lost in that kind of a zone of being comfortable. And that's why it's hard to be strong. We're not willing to leave our comfort zone. Are you willing? Are you willing to leave your comfort zone? Do you believe, oh, I'm so scared, I don't think I can do it. You don't believe in God? You don't believe in yourself of what God has given to you that you can do it. No, I can't do it, I need that thing. See, you became dependent, you became weak. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta believe you can do it, you can overcome. Because God has given you the power and the strength to overcome. So be willing to leave your comfort zone. Don't be a slave. Please don't be a slave to your comfort zone. It will control your life. Leave your comfort zone. Step into the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. And let him take you on a journey and grow you into a life that you never thought you'd ever grow into before. He'll grow you so much and you'll change so much and you'll thank him. You may not thank him now, but you'll thank him later. You will thank him, Lord. Thank you for what you put me through because you now made me what I am today. I never thought I'd become this strong. I never thought that other people would rely and depend upon me for this. 
I never thought that with my background, with my personality, with my intellect, that you put me into a position like this. How unworthy I am, Father. But, you know, I serve a great God. Be strong. When the trial rears its ugly head and comes out at you, have that in your mind. All right, it's coming. It's coming. Be strong. Get ready to get hurt. Get ready for tears. Get ready for that stress to come out. Come on, let's do it. Be strong. If you never have that, then you'll always run away. You'll always fear and you'll always break. Have that in your mind. Let's do it. Have that in your mind. It's time to leave my comfort zone. Don't cling on to it anymore. Let it go. Believe in that book that promised, that promised you he would give you strength. Believe you can do it. Yes, you can, and I don't care what you say. You can do it. Why? Because you're a liar and God's not. And God said he won't give you a burden greater than you can bear, and God promised that he will give you strength. And God promised that he'll give you the grace. And he said my grace is sufficient. That means that's all you need. Nothing else, nothing plus. That's all you need. So it's time to believe that you can do it. All right, I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Father God, uh, we live in a time, Father, of great weakness, and it's going to become weaker, and people are going to become more complacent and more dependent on the devil's system, on the devil's people to better their lives. How sad that they become trapped and ensnared through a system of lies, of education, security, and money, intellect, media, and government powers rather than Jesus Christ. Rather than believing that we can own the problem and overcome the issues because God has given us the strength. Help us to be strong. Tell ourselves to be strong, to believe that you will pull us through, and to believe that we can do it. It's because of you. Help us to understand the meaning of gentleness and patience, to go by your timetable so we can become stronger. It's what makes a true man and a true woman, a strong, grown adult, male and female, and it's what helps us to live more successful lives. We need strength, Lord. Without strength, churches crumble, families crumble, lives crumble. That's why some people commit suicide too, Father. They cannot take it anymore. We live in a day and age where everybody has not become strong. And I pray you help us to become strong in you. In Jesus' name we pray.